Welcome to Lesson 15, Combination Project 3. Today we're drawing a colored pencil. But first, let's go over our most important living ideas for our lesson today. We can see light and dark. When we draw, we show highlights and shadows. The direction of the light changes where the highlights, midtones, and shadows are. Everyday items can be combinations of simple shapes. A colored pencil is a cylinder and a cone. Making light marks can be just as important as dark marks. And observe how straight lines relate to one another before you draw them. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to observe as we always do. Let's observe the shape and then we'll observe the shading. On this image of a colored pencil, I am noticing as I already stated that the long part of the pencil is a cylinder. It is a perfect cylinder actually. It's not distorted. It doesn't get wider. It doesn't bend. So we have a very simple cylinder shape for most of it. And then over here on the end, we have a cone, which we've drawn both a cone and a cylinder previously. The only change here is that they're connected. And so we have to kind of smush together the shapes that we've drawn. Um, and then we will, of course, copy all the shading and we'll have a colored pencil right in front of our eyes. Okay, let's see. Any other notes on the shape? No, it's very simple. As far as the shading, our light source is coming kind of from behind this object and we can tell that because the shadow, especially this large cast shadow is projected in front of the pencil toward us, the viewer. Um, I am noticing a bright highlight here. The wood of the pencil is a lighter value so we'll definitely be sure to make it a lighter value. And then I am seeing, like I said, this huge cast shadow. We have some extra dark shadows going on here. Um, the pencil itself is quite reflective. Can you see how e easily it reflects the light that's on it? Um, it also reflects the dark. If you were able to see it from a certain angle, you might be able to tell, kind of see that it will reflect darker images. And so if we look very carefully here, I'm going to use this red to point. Um, the highlight is the re reflection of the light source. And then we have these like almost like stripes. Do you see this really dark one? So there's a dark stripe. So it was reflecting something dark. And then at the very bottom of the pencil itself, there's this light stripe. Can you see it? It's lighter than the darkest shadows there is a less dark shadow. This is called reflected light. Reflected light is light that is bouncing off a surface and hitting the object from a different angle than the original light source. Remember, our original light was coming this way and this reflected light is probably shining off the paper that the pencil was photographed on, causing a brighter line to appear at the bottom. If we can capture reflected light, it's going to make our object seem even more real. Okay, with all of that observing out of the way, let's begin our drawing with a toned ground. <clears throat> Grab you a piece of, nice big piece of charcoal, lay it on its side. Tone your ground. Today I'm working with a lot of medium to dark values. So I'm gonna use a lighter toned ground. <clears throat> I don't like it when my object gets lost in the background that I've created. Even if you wanted it lighter, go over it again with a different part of your chamois and that shall be good enough for me. <clears throat> Beginning with the shape of the pencil using a cylinder, I'm gonna start on this end. A cylinder has an ellipse on the end of it, but this time we aren't actually seeing it. We're only seeing kind of the curved edge of 
the end of the pencil. And so I am going to sketch in a curved edge, curving the same direction that I'm seeing it curve in my source image. Okay, now coming over here, I'm gonna draw kind of the end of the curved edge. I have a choice to make. This is a very, it's very long and thin and I need to choose if I'm going to make mine long and thin like it or if I'm gonna make it bigger for the sake of the video. I think I want it to be long and thin and so I am going to erase everything. That was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I need it to be smaller. My curve was too large. Okay, that's gonna be, I think that'll be better. The part where we have the colored pencil wrapper changing into the wood is almost kind of like the end of our cylinder. Um, and it doesn't have a clean line, it's kind of scrappy and messy, but for now I'm just gonna give a general curve, like the end of the cylinder, and connect my lines with two parallel lines, just like the uh, like a pencil is in real life. My lines do not have to be perfect. They probably are not perfectly straight. That is okay, we are not here for perfection. Now, I am going to make two lines that come together to form a cone, like the tip of a pencil, okay? So there's that. I am going to block out the tip the colored part of the pencil just kind of dotted a few times with my charcoal and I have an inexact line there. Okay, I'm going to observe relationships now to figure out where the cast shadow is coming out of the pencil. I see, let's start here, I see that it is about the center. I'll hold it up higher here. The cast shadow is coming from about the center of the pencil on this side. And then over here, it's kind of coming down at this angle and it's coming out from behind. And it, it's pretty close to the center of the wood part, maybe a little more left of center from the wood. So now, now that I've observed carefully those relationships, I can estimate where to begin my cast shadow direction. Cast shadow here is a curve, kind of has a soft curve line here and then a nice straight line another parallel line see these lines that do not intersect okay now before i keep going too far on this one i need to start getting my shape right remember that relationship i observed a little bit left of center from the wood we got it coming down i'm going to notice here the tip of the pencil extends beyond the tip of the cast shadow um, so I'm going to make sure that's the truth for mine. And this is a very long line, isn't it? So let me make it nice and long. I'm going to check one more relationship. This parallel line changes and becomes a diagonal line. And it is, it's kind of in a little bit of a diagonal. It, occurs about here. Okay, mine did not occur there, so I'm going to completely get rid of it and try again. There. I'm happy with that. That will work. Filling in the cast shadow is my next step. It is fairly all one color, maybe a little bit lighter on the edges so I can soften that will happen naturally when I soften my the edges of my cast shadow and then I see that it's darkest up up against the pencil which is very very common you'll notice when objects are sitting on the ground the darkest point is the part that's literally under them where your eye can just barely see underneath of it Darkening the edge there. Now I'm going to soften the whole shadow. Then I'll soften the edges.
the farther away a cast shadow gets from its object, typically the less of a defined edge the shadow has. So knowing that, I'm going to allow that to kind of influence very little bit of how I'm doing this. It does still have an edge though, so I'm gonna be careful. Okay, I'm noticing that the cast shadow does not have the dark darkness over in this section by the end of the pencil, but it has a distinct beginning when we actually get under the pencil. So try to maybe lighten some of this so that that darkness looks darker. Okay, moving on. I always need to remind myself that the goal of these videos is not perfection on my part, um, but it's instruction. So making sure I don't spend too long in one area is very good. Now let's fill in the shading of the pencil. To begin, I'm just going to literally fill it in. Notice the shape of the direction of my charcoal. I'm kind of like arcing it as I'm filling it in arced lines on a curved surface, if they're curving in the in the direction of the object, will actually give your um, <clears throat> give your object even more believability to the eye. It will seem even more real. There we go. Okay, so now I have it's kind of like a mid-tone, right? The pencil is filled in with this mid-tone. But I see this, I'm gonna get this dark strip going. There's kind of this long, dark strip here. I definitely need to make sure my shadow is staying nice and dark down here. Let's see if I can grab a darker piece. Okay, so I've got some of this darkness that we observed. All right, and I'm going to say it needs to be a little bit bigger, that dark spot. So let me extend it downward. I'm going to grab my tortillon and blend it. Because even though there is a distinct darkness, it's not so overpowering that that's all you can see. I'm Now I'm going to, so see, I used this part for the dark part of my blending and I'm flipping it over now. And now I'm gonna blend, scrub that lighter area that I left at the base. The bottom line is now very distracting to me. I'm gonna soften it. The, the line of shadow that's under the pencil. Yeah, I'm happy with that, that's better. Okay. Again, I'm seeing kind of a little bit of a darker area that doesn't extend all the way. It goes maybe like halfway. That's good. Okay. Smoothing things together. Okay. Good with that. And then I think it's a good time to start trying to work up that really bright highlight um oh yeah that's not too bad oh pleasant how pleasantly surprising sometimes i feel like my kneaded eraser <laughs> isn't working hard enough for me i think partly that's because of the paper i chose to use this is newsprint um it's not as great as other types of charcoal paper out there it's good for lessons and it's good for like student work Now, I'm gonna jump and fill in the lead. The pencil lead is dark. There is a darker part on the bottom of it. So I'm gonna fill in the darker part with charcoal and then soften it out and see how I like it. Ooh, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, and then the general color of my wood I like, 
the outline does not work. So I'm going to tap it gently with my eraser. I don't, I don't want to take away too much. I don't want it to be bright. Okay. So the outline has faded and now I'm going to fill in the shadow of the wood down here. Gentle. I'm so soft on this because it's not as dark. I'm trying to be really careful and then make sure the shadow of the wood should line up with the shadow on the lead. I don't know if you can see that from there. Let's take a quick peek at the specific shadow. Okay, so this shadow, it extends across the cylinder despite the difference in tone of the base. The shadow shape continues across both together. Um, and so that's an important detail that I would like to achieve. Um, I am seeing that mine was too tall, so I'm using my eraser to come get it down a little. And then I'm going to use my charcoal to actually remake the shadow on the lead and follow that line to, into the wood. Wrong marks help us find the right marks, even when it comes to shading. That lead got longer, didn't it? Back and forth, careful observing. That's what this is about. I see reflected light under the pencil here. So I'm just gonna, on the wood, just so, so gently tap and create reflected light here. Um, looking at little details, trying to make, get rid of distractions. Wow, it's looking good. Um, I'm going to work back on the wood here. That line, I'm softening it. It was too harsh of a line. Now I'm going to lighten by tapping to maybe create some texture on the wood. Got to get that top edge of the wood. That's one of the brightest parts of our whole thing, isn't it? And then of course the paper, the paper is kind of jagged. So I'm gonna come in and see if I can add just a little bit of jaggedness to the, not the paper, the wrapping of the pencil. The lead is looking too large, it's gonna, very gently um, make it smaller. Okay. One thing I am sensing as I look at this is that the pencil itself the cylinder is too, the cylinder is too large in comparison to the cone on the end. How could I fix that? There's two ways. I could make it thinner by adding more shadow here, or I can make the cylinder larger. And I think I want to make, um, nope, the cone. Sorry, I could make the cone larger and that is what I want to do. So I'm going to extend the lead a little bit and then extend the wood a little bit, which is actually a lighter color. So I'm gonna come in and try to get the shape right again. Shading I can worry about in a second. Okay. Here's the shadow line that I want. Gonna soften it a lot, spread it out. I know I have reflected light on that wood there, so I'm being careful to preserve that. Tap, tap. 
I have my eraser now and I'm going to make a flat edge with it, a thin flat edge and tap it because I can see a lot of texture in the wood grain. Um, so hopefully try to get a little of that texture going. I'm liking how this is working out. I see that the pencil lead is also inexact um, in its in its edge. You know how it transitions from lead to wood; it's jagged. And as the final touches, always, we deepen our darkest sp spots and brighten our lightest. I am seeing this is pretty dark, this edge. Wrong piece of charcoal. Some pieces of charcoal might be like a little bit more brown than others. Um, and so if you're struggling getting something dark enough, try changing to a different piece of charcoal. And it might just help you out. Okay, deepening my darkest. And there we have it, a colored pencil. I hope that um, you can see as I see how this reflected light is making our object seem a lot more real. Thanks for joining me for lesson 15.